ever wanted to enter another world? You know, just open a portal and step right into a better dimension? Well, if the answer is yes, then maybe books are what you're looking for. But did you know that just as in books, reading has its own uh, certain times? And what even is reading? Well, reading is a pastime activity which we do in order to in enjoy a story or to learn something new or gather more uh, knowledge on a topic we already know. Schools also mandate some reading materials uh, for students to m make them see how older books looked and make them uh, read. Skimming is the first uh, type of reading which I brought to you, uh, which is relatively quick because we purposefully skip through parts of the text. We do this in order to grasp the main idea of the text, but we don't want to remember the details. Scanning is the next type, which we do when we want to search for a certain set of phrase or word or a number in a larger text. We quickly scan through the text, searching for that piece of information. Intensive reading, on the other hand, is the most time-consuming reading. We do this when we want to learn the text by heart. And, we, and in order to do that, we need to understand every word and <coughs> in order to uh, remember them. Extensive reading, however, isn't used for academic uh, purposes. It's used when we want to enjoy a story. Although, uh, as a side effect, it is very good for language learning because of the sheer amount of material that we worm ourselves through. Uh, we read a lot of materials on our level, meaning that the level of books depend on the level of the reader, because we want to understand the story we are reading in order to enjoy it. The main two types of books are electronic and printed books although both of them have their own forms. For example, if you want to know what is going on in the world, we can read a newspaper, or if you want to follow the life of an internet celebrity, we can read their blog. If you want to learn something, we can read an academic research, or if you want to enjoy a story, we can read a leisure book. Leisure book can be sorted uh, differently though, uh, and the sorting method is called genres. A genre is the content of the book, meaning uh, it uh, explains what uh, scene the book is written in. Some known genres are science fiction, which consists of spaceship, uh, space travel, and future technology, or fantasy with its mystical animals, educational, from which we can learn something new, or horror story, if we want to get a good fright. One of the most controversial topics of reading is whether we should read an e-book or a printed book. But as all things in life, they have their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, e-books are much lighter than printed books, and we can store up to thousands of books in them. And if we want to read a new book, we don't need to go into the shops, we can just simply download them from the internet. Although they need electricity, and they are much easier to break. Meaning, if you break them, all the books that are downloaded on it will be lost. And with current technology, we aren't able to create picture, uh, colors without the need of backlight. Meaning, if we don't want to uh, hurt our eyes, we, only, we need to read our favorite books in black and white. Printed books, on the other hand, are much, easy, uh, much harder to break, because there isn't really anything uh, that we can break in them. <clears throat> they are colored with pretty images because uh, ink is colorful and we don't need backlight for it to be seen and they don't need electricity. And one of the biggest uh, arguments in reading is that uh, reading printed books has its own feeling uh, rather than uh, ebooks because you can touch the paper, you can smell the book, which gives it a certain feeling although they take up a lot more space and they are much more heavy, or they are much heavier, uh, meaning if you uh, gather a lot of books, they, after some point you,
can't really put it anywhere. Uh, some rich people have their own libraries in them, but the average people, average person doesn't have a room dedicated for a home library. So, uh, and because their uh, weight, you usually don't carry uh, a lot of books with you. Since some books are more famous than others, uh, means that some authors are more famous than others. I brought you some authors from my liking. For example, Gerard Tolkien, who is uh, really famous uh, with his uh, Lord of the Rings uh, series, because in that series he uh, created the fantasy world, which has been used in several board games, uh, movies and other books even. Uh, J.K. Rowling did not create anything, but used the English folk tale and beliefs to build up her wizarding world. Agatha Christie uh, did not create mystical or magical world, uh, but rather she used the real murder mysteries as a base for her uh, detective books. And H.P. Lovecraft created a cult myth called the Cthulhu myth which I really like, and that's why I brought him as my chosen author. He lived from 1890 till 1937. After the insanity of his dad, uh, he and his family moved to his grandfather's, who had a really big library in his home. The library consisted more than uh, 2,000 books, and uh, Lovecraft fell in love with reading there. He was most fruitful in his later life, <laughs> when he moved to Providence. Uh, and after his death in 1937, his fans constructed a tombstone for him in 1977, uh, four decades later, with one of his fa uh, most famous quotes, I am Providence, which was taken out from one of his letters. He wasn't famous in his lifetime, and most of his books got published after his death. Uh, but he got famous uh, later on, after his death. Uh, his books consist of a self-made world, uh, housing his uh, myth of uh, an ancient god called Cthulhu. This cult and the cult of the god uh, and other elements like mystical creatures and events uh, are used up in later uh, films, movies and games called uh, Lovecraftian uh, artworks. And one of his books, which I really liked, is uh, Beyond the Wall of Sleep. It's a sci-fi short story which has some horror elements, but it doesn't want to frighten the reader. It was written and published in 1919. The story is, uh, describes the interaction of two characters, called the main character and Joe Slater. The main character is anonymous, and he is an intern at a mental hospital. He has some inventing background uh, because he wanted to invent a telepathic apparatus uh, which he could use to talk with people while no words are spoken. And Joe Slater is a mountain dweller uh, who is very uneducated and he has some unknown mysterious mental problems. The story starts with Joe Slater getting driven to hospital after an accident. The accident is a result of one of his uh, scenes because sometimes he wakes from his uh, sleep in an enraged, uh, bloodlust state. In this another state, he speaks of a world he shouldn't be able to because he doesn't have the necessary vocabulary for it. And <clears throat> because of this another state, he is driven to the mental hospital our main character is working at. Although he got all the care he needed, he was dying one day, and, be, and at that day, our main character put his uh, telepathy prototype on him. And with the telepathy device, he was able to break the wall of sleep and enter the world uh, Joe Slater described. The world consists of uh, indefinite plains and mountains, where buildings are made out of light itself. There is a constant melody coming seemingly out of nowhere, and the sky itself is a dump. 
Uh, in this world, he speaks with Jostator's soul, uh, but no words were spoken, just as he wanted to, uh, to achieve. Uh, Slater's soul uh, explains that in this form they are cosmic entities, uh, and he, Jostator's soul, need to kill his nemesis who mocked him. In order to do that, he turns himself into a star to devour another star, which is his nemesis. Although in the process, Joe Slater dies because his body cannot live on without a soul. In the aftermath, the story's goal is not to frighten the reader, but to entertain them. It raises the question of the soul, whether it exists, how it looks, and it makes some theories about it by building up the mystical world uh, explained in the story. The book's language is uh, quite hard to understand because it is a higher language around C1 or C2. Uh, the author uses an ar archaic language, uh, which we can see from words like encumbrance and disclosing. Encumbrance meaning to be dependent on somebody, and disclosing meaning to make a secret known to public. Uh, it also replaces some words, for example, it uses save instead of accept, while save has the meaning of accept, but it's not often used. Uh, it also uses phrases like dumb of indescribable splendor, meaning uh, a very beautiful dumb, but in a more sophisticated way. The story itself is written as a diary, uh, consisting only, on, only monologues. Uh, uh, the writer writes the main character's speech in first person, but uses reported uh, speech for other, other characters uh, talking. In my opinion, the story itself was intriguing, fun, and entertaining, uh, especially building up the world written before my eyes in my head. It, greatly, it can greatly increase one's vocabulary, in my opinion, because of the uh, words which are not often used or uh, more archaic. And because of that, we will be able to understand archaic texts more easily in the future, because we have seen the words written in them. Uh, it can give you a more sophisticated English, which you can use in your daily speech or in uh, school essays, for example. And thank you for your attention.